सर गुड इवनिंग सर Okay, so students, we had started. So, in the last class, we studied about the electricity and electrical charges. We were testing about the conductivity of certain substances. We were testing about that which substances are good conductors and which substances are bad conductors of electricity. And in that process, in that process, when the electricity conductors of electricity we observe, so we were to observe the conductivity of liquids. Okay, so uh, in class seventh, we have seen the conductivity of solids like plastic, paper, uh, metals. So we have observed over there that. Uh, Let's start now. So, which liquids conduct electricity and which liquids do not conduct electricity? So, there is a common criteria on the basis of which we can say that which liquids will be able to conduct electricity and which liquids will not be able to conduct electricity. Okay. So, the liquids which contain ions, the very common definition we can look for is the liquids that contain ions can conduct electricity so the liquids that contain ions can conduct electricity whereas the liquids that do not contain ions that do not have ions they cannot conduct electricity okay and just now all of you please turn on your cameras everyone turn on your cameras so we will see what are ions in the last class or in the beginning of the class i had told you something about the charges that how do atoms gain charge overall the atom is neutral suppose we talk of uh, any atom, let's say we talk of a chlorine atom. So, the chlorine atom, it has 17 protons and 17 electrons also. So, it has a total net charge of 0. It has 17 plus and 17 minus, which is 17 electrons. So it will have a total net charge of zero. But if this chlorine accept one electron from somewhere, as we know that electrons are negatively charged, if suppose one more electron is added to it, so then this chlorine atom would be having 17 Please. protons and 18 electrons. Ma right? Sir, sir. Yes. Then it will be then it will be negative uh, negative, sir. CH minus. Yeah. Then it will become chloride ion, Cl minus. It will become chloride ion and hence it will conduct electricity. If it is chlorine gas, Cl2, it will not conduct electricity. If it is chloride ion, if it becomes ion, then it will conduct electricity. Similarly, if you have hydrogen, so hydrogen will not conduct electricity. H2 or hydrogen gas will not conduct electricity. But if you have hydrogen ions, H plus ions, 
so it will conduct electricity okay now let us see what happens with pure water so in the last class i had also told you that pure water is a poor conductor of electricity pure water does not conduct electricity so pure water is a poor conductor but salty water is a good conductor so salty water is a good conductor of electricity but pure water is a poor conductor of electricity if you observe the formula of water the formula of water is h2o so a pure water if you have pure water it does not contain any ions pure water is h2o does not contain any ions so it will be non conducting it does not have any ions but if you have impure water or salty water so a salty water can contain a salty water will have the formula it will have salt dissolved in water can anyone tell me the formula of salt sir nacl sir nacl nacl okay so for salt we know the formula of salt as nacl this is also called as common salt so this i'll ask everyone everyone should be able to remember common salt and for common salt the name is as nacl for common salt the name is the a compound is nacl formula is nacl and its name is sodium chloride now when sodium chloride or common salt is dissolved in water then sodium chloride forms ions it forms ion so if you have salty water your salty water will contain ions salty water will contain na plus ions it will contain cl minus ions it will contain h plus ions it will contain hydroxide ions so a number of ions are available in the common salt solution in the salt solution so therefore a salty water will be a good conductor of electricity or even if you take an impure water like acidic water so that will also be a good conductor of electricity okay so now i think you people can define that uh, which water or will be a conductor and which water will be a poor conductor okay so in the similar way just like this water we observed in the similar way all the substances which will form ions they will be good conductors and the liquids which will not form their ions they will be poor conductors so let us see let us have a test of the substances which can conduct electricity and which cannot conduct electricity for example so we will have a uh, lemon water or let's say lemon juice we have we have a uh, tomato tomato juice let's have vinegar and oil vegetable oil and we have impure water or tap water our tap water is, a, is impure water okay this is not distilled water so out of this what can you say about lemon water will this be a conductor or not will this be a good conductor yes sir yes sir yes lemon juice will be a good conductor as it will conduct the ion it will have the ion tomato juice will also be a good conductor vinegar will also be a good conductor vegetable oil will not be a good conductor vegetable sir, oil is after vegetable oil sir tap water tap water okay tap water so, okay okay sir. okay 
tap water means the water that we obtain from our taps. Yes, yes. Okay. That's not distilled water. So vegetable oil, it is not a good conductor of electricity. No, it's, it does not conduct. Tap water, yes. And what about distilled water? No, no, sir. Sir, no, no. sir. No. So distilled water also does not contain, uh, does not conduct electricity. In the last class, we had seen how to make this, uh, how to make the tester. How to make the tester? We had made a circuit to test the conductivity. Okay. So to test the conductivity, our circuit looks something like this. So we have here water, uh, whatever substance we want to test, we have here, we fill it up and then we dip two electrodes into the solution. From the two electrodes, we connect a wire through the battery. So here you connect wire. And to connect it through a battery, we also connect a bulb here. We connect a bulb and then a battery or a cell to have the test. Now, in this way, we can observe that the, if the solution is a good conductor, the bulb will start, uh, start glowing. And if the solution is a bad conductor, the bulb will not glow. Now, I told you one of the problems that we can face with this bulb. It can happen that the solution is conducting, but still the bulb will not glow. Okay. So I told you some possible reasons. Is it possible? First of all, tell me, is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So yes. Yes. No, 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 no. It's not possible. Not possible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I explain you here how the bulb works. Who will explain me the working of a bulb? A uh, bulb flows through the battery. Through okay, the bulb. Through the battery, yes, and. The, uh, Varshit, can you explain? How does the bulb start working? How does the bulb glow? The bulb starts working through the... Yes, how does the bulb glow? First, the energy will convert into electrical energy and pass through the tungsten of the bulb, sir. Yes, there and then... Get heated. Then it's okay. get heated, sir. But okay. it will not burn because tungsten is a high melting point substance. Okay, very good answer from Pranava. A very good answer. Everyone should give such an answer. Okay, so this was a, the main reason is that the, there is a filament in the bulb. And when the filament heats up, then only the bulb starts glowing. So it can happen that the filament is not heated up sufficiently and the bulb will not glow. Right? So it will happen if there is small amount of current. If there is small current, so then the bulb may not glow. Okay, Because the filament will not get heated up. So for this, I told you one of the things, we can make a certain change here. What change can we make? So we can use an LED bulb. Yes, we can use LED. LED bulb, very good. So instead of this bulb, filament bulb, we can use LED bulbs. Uh, who will tell me the full form of LED? 
light LED emitting diode yeah. led is light emitting diode it is light emitting diode LED stands for light emitting diode. So even if there is a small current, then also the LED start glowing. I think all of you must have seen an LED bulb. So just now I'll show you one of the LED bulbs and we will see uh, how, does it, how does that LED bulb work. So basically in the LED bulb or in the working of the LED bulb, we observe here that the LED bulb, can, uh, it has two legs, one the positive and the other one is negative. So LED bulb. Uh, all these are LED bulbs which consist of a number of small LEDs. Uh, but I am looking just for LED. A small LED, not a bulb. So just one minute I show you LED only. Okay, see. This is how an LED looks like. This one, all of them, they are LEDs now. So if you observe the LED, it has two legs. The LED has two legs. These are different colored LEDs. Okay. One of the leg is bigger and one leg is smaller. Can all of you see that we have a smaller leg and a bigger leg, right? Yes. So see, the LED bulb, it has two legs a bigger one and the smaller one. This bigger leg is the positive one and the smaller one is negative. So you need to connect the bigger one to the positive end of the battery and smaller one to the negative end and hence the LED bulb will glow even if there is a small amount of current flowing through it. Okay. So we can make a tester using the LED bulb. Now we will be discussing the heating effect of electric current. We will discuss two effects. One is the heating effect. The other one is magnetic effect of electric current. So let us see heating effect of electric current. Okay, so at your home in winters, which devices do you use to uh, get your room heated up? Heater. 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 Okay. Yes, and? Sir, steam. Heater and? Steam, sir. Yeah, like um, for getting the steam for, for cold. Okay, we, we have, we, we use here heater. We and geezers. Geezers, very good. <laughs> we use heater, geezer and? Sir, we use solenoid also, sir. Uh, solenoid is a different thing. That's for magnetic effect. Okay. So we use here heater, geyser, blower. We use uh, induction. We use certain other, we use electric iron for pressing. So electric iron and all these devices, they are based on the heating effect. Heating effect means when electric current, when electric current flows through a conductor or a resistor, when electric current flows through a wire, it heats up. So using this phenomena that whenever electric current will flow through the wire, it will heat up. So using this phenomena, we devise, we make these heating, uh, we make these devices. We use a heater, we can use a geyser, a blower induction. All these are the devices which are based on the heating effect of electric. Okay. When electric current is passed through them, they all of them get heated up. And because of that, they can emit out those heat radiations either in the form of, uh, we can use them in different, different ways. So let's see the heating effect.
we see the different uh, substances which we use as a heating effect. So here you have an electric iron. Can you name this device? Here is one device which I don't think that you will be able to identify. But if you can name it, it's very good. This first one. Fuse. Yeah, it is an electric fuse. It is also based on the heating effect. What is the purpose of this electric fuse? Sir, I know, sir. Power. Yes. Sir, the uh, fuse protects the machine. Uh, it uh, protects the machine from excess current uh, to pass through it. Okay, so fuse protects the machine. Fuse protects our home against excess current. So if you have some short circuit or if you have any such electric problems at your home, so fuse is the one which protects us. Due to the flow of excess current, the fuse starts heating up and after it gets heated up, it melts. So it melts and hence the circuit breaks down. Here you have some more electric devices which use electric current for heating up. No, heating it, MCB board is not working on the heating effect. MCB board works on the magnetic effect of electric current. Okay, sir. The fuse wire works on the heating effect. MCB works on magnetic effect. Okay. So see here we have some devices still more like electric iron. We have electric kettle, electric cooker, microwave oven, electric rods. So all these are the devices which use electric current for the heating effect. So when current passes through it, they get heated up. So they get heated up and hence we can utilize that in the form of heat energy. Not only this, there are still many, many more applications of electrical energy converting to heat energy. So uh, this one, this type of a heater, it is also based on the heating effect. This is your electric heater. You have a room heater that is also based on the electric heating effect of electric current. So a number of devices are there which are based on the heating effect of electric current. That is when electric current is passed to them, they get heated up. Sir? Your, uh, yes? Are there any machines which are not dependent on heating effect? Yeah, there are a number of machines which are not dependent on heating effect. Rather, those machines, they want uh, that there should not be any heating effect. Okay, if there is any heating effect, so it will be a, a, a type of loss of energy. Okay. So there are devices which are dependent uh, on or which in which that is it is there that uh, they are they do not require the heat energy. Okay, uh, so they, they may be in the form of magnetic field. For example, your fan. Your fan is not based on the heating effect. It is based on magnetic effect. Electric motor, that is also based on magnetic effect. Over yes. there, if, if heating takes place, so that is undesirable. So we'll also see magnetic effect of electric current. Sir, what is induction, sir? Okay, how does induction work, right? That is an induction cooktop. Have you seen an induction cooktop? No, sir, just I've heard of it. You heard of it. Okay, I just show you one of the induction cooktops. So induction cooktops, they also, they have the combined effect of uh, magnetic effect and heating effect. This is the induction cooktop. All these are your induction cooktops. You, they are also used for cooking, but they are based on magnetic as well as heating effect. Both these effects are used in induction cooktops. Like the so heating cup inside the fresh sheet, sir. Yes, what happened? The heat what uh, we won't see the heat, but it comes from the down of the machine. Yeah, so that is a it higher phenomenon. Like... Yeah, we call it as we call it as something called eddy currents. 
there is a phenomena which we call eddy currents which are responsible for working of the induction flow okay so that's uh, that's beyond your syllabus you should not go into that how it is working okay we will see the magnetic effect how the magnetic effect works so when current is passed through a wire it behaves as a magnet see here when a current is passed through a wire it behaves as a magnet so the wire itself behaves as a magnet and this property is used in making temporary magnets we can make temporary magnets which can look like a solenoid for example we look here we example we call solenoid so a solenoid is a circular turn a coil of many circular turns is called as solenoid it is something like this you have a circular turn of coil so this is our solenoid and when electric current is passed through the solenoid then this solenoid becomes a magnet the solenoid itself itself becomes a magnet to increase the magnetic effect we can wind the solenoid on iron piece we can wind this on an iron piece so the iron piece will also become magnetized so if the solenoid is wound on an iron piece it will look something like this okay so you have a page from this chapter and the syllabus that we will not be uh, we will not be including the heating it whatever we have done that will be coming for your test on sunday okay okay anyone having yes father you will say